Well, President Obama taking questions from reporters in a wide-ranging news conference with a heavy emphasis on the economy. The president blaming Republicans for blocking the economic recovery, but also pointing the finger at himself at times for what he called his failure to change the tone in Washington. Here's a piece of it. And what I've got is the Republicans holding middle-class tax relief hostage because they're insisting we've got to give tax relief to millionaires and billionaires. And are, you know, are there you know, uh, things that I might have done during the course of 18 months that would, uh, you know, at the margins have improved some of the tone in Washington? Yeah, probably. All right. Well, there's some of it. Uh, let's talk about it. Joining me now for a fair and balanced debate, Phil Musser, a Republican consultant and an advisor to Governor Tim Pawlenty of Minnesota, and Bernard Whitman, Democratic pollster and strategist. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to have you both here Thanks today. To uh, looking back at some of what the president said yesterday, uh, Phil, respond to that claim that the president made that Republicans are holding the middle class tax cut hostage and waiting for the full package. Why not move ahead with, with you know, with the under 250 for starters and deal with the rest later? Well, I, I think that the, 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 the bottom line, if you look at the, the, the tax distribution in this country, about 47 percent of Americans in this country right now pay no tax at all. And so tinkering with the tax code at a time when there's enormous pressure on the economy, a fragile economy, uh, and offering these solutions really late in the game, I think is kind of counterproductive. I mean, it, I, I thought it was very interesting that just, you know, moments after turning his West Wind badge in that, you know, Pete Orzag, the president's OMB director left the White House and penned an op-ed that essentially laid out a path to extend the tax cuts for the entire package and, you know, keep the, you know, keep, uh, do nothing to try and tinker with the, 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 the very fragile momentum, if we have any at all, in the economy right now. So yeah. uh, uh, that's, where the, that's where the jobs are being created, Martha. Uh, and that, that's the underlying issue here, Bernard. And he's getting it from Democratic Senate candidates like Michael Bennett, uh, also from Ben Nelson, that you, know, you simply cannot raise taxes on anybody in this environment if you truly uh, want to see this economy turn around. Well, uh, Martha, the first thing we say, my thoughts and prayers go out to the families of those who lost their lives on 9-11 in the American military who's keeping us safe. But with respect to the economy, here's what we need to do. We need to pass targeted tax cuts to the middle class. We, why on earth would we give away tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires who literally will not even notice another 100000 or $200,000 in, uh, in their bank account? We need to focus on, an, on the following three things. One, targeted tax cuts to the middle class. Two, getting the small business bill through Congress. And three, investing in infrastructure. Why this Bernard, Republican can, you know, Congress? Bernard, can I just can I just ask him? I mean, why not use the stimulus dollars that haven't been spent to start that? And I think a lot of Americans. I want to get your thoughts on this, sure. and then we'll head back to Phil. Uh, thought that infrastructure was what was supposed to happen in the first stimulus package, and they right. believe that the the first stimulus package got hijacked uh, by Democrats who wanted a lot of pet projects in there, and that it was a big waste of money. A lot of it. Hey, look. Let me let me let me let me give a can I give a three I'll give a three point ahead, rebuttal Phil. and then we'll go back to, ben, we'll go back to yeah but look here's a three point rebuttal impound the unspent stimulus funds and the TARP money and give them for a social security payroll tax holiday fast track a trade agreement with Latin America that would allow us to trade immediately and don't do anything to raise the you know to and extend the Bush tax cuts three basic very simple ideas that would result in growth which is the only way we can get ourselves out of this mountain of debt we put on our kids and our futures by growing. We need to start growing. And some would argue, Bernard, that, that, that some of those things would, would do uh, very well for, for Democrats as they head into these elections. Well, look, sure. a lot of the stimulus money has already been allocated to the state, so it's hard to get that money back. But what we, I, I think the Obama administration's uh, major um, mistake was in properly setting expectations and then communicating the benefits of the recovery to the American people. For example, I never would have said in selling the stimulus package that sell this, unemployment would stay at 8%. In fact, what we should have said is if you don't pass the stimulus, the unemployment rate will almost certainly skyrocket to 12%. Two, the auto bailout. This was an extraordinary success. Right. In the last, uh, GM posted a $1.3 billion profit in the second quarter. Detroit's adding jobs for the first yep. time in a decade. They're about to launch an IPO. They're paying the money back. Right. Nobody thought that it would be successful. And in fact, it has proven to be uh, an incredible turnaround for Detroit, right, and well, the, the administration from, simply has not communicated that out properly. from both sides. Uh, the voters get to decide in, I don't know, about 50 days uh, 50 on the calendar. 50 it's be 53 days, right, Martha, I think? But who's counting, days. right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Phil right. Musser, thanks very much. Uh, Bernard Whitman, always later. good to have you guys. Uh, we'll see what good happens. Coverage. Good coverage today. Thank